the secret to beat rising prices in 2023. First of all, yes, there is inflation and it is happening. But you can beat it. Now, um, I'm going to tell you my number one way for beating inflation in 2023. And I'm doing it almost every single day. And that is buying used. What? Now, a lot of people really don't like to hear that. But, you know, you're going to have to get used to wearing used shoes. You're going to have to get used to wearing used clothes. I know people who flat out refused. They would go sleep in a motel. But they flat out refused to buy clothes that someone else has worn. That's just ridiculous. It doesn't make any sense. Um. And so you're going to have to start making some changes if you want to keep paying your debt off. What? I'm agreeing with you. Oh. I'm listening with rapt attention. Oh, well, you already know all this. I do all this, which I'm very proud of. Thank you. Um, and so one of the ways that I do that is by shopping thrift stores and yard sales. That's probably the number one. I also do things like shop uh, Facebook Marketplace and Upcycle. Those are very good in, uh, or we have a, we have a community page called Upcycle in my town and people post things to buy and sell on there. And let's see, our mattress is new on our bed. Our couch is new. We have one son that has a new mattress. And I think that's the only brand new furniture we have in our home. First, we didn't have any new furniture because. Mm -hmm. Oh, one get, other chair. We could get nice stuff for low price, but then the kids would destroy it all anyway, mm -hmm. even though we, we didn't let them destroy it all. But kids destroy things just yeah. because of their kids. Yeah. So, um, and, and then, I don't shop Goodwill at thrift stores. I do not like Goodwill. Now, when we lived in Colorado, our Goodwill occasionally had good prices on furniture, so I would buy it every now and then, but I never bought clothes or anything from Goodwill. Goodwill is not a thrift store. I don't consider it a, a um, good thrift store at all. And so I buy the majority of our clothes, 90% of our clothes are thrifted. I don't buy the guy's shoes anymore, but until they hit about size 11 or so, <laughs> it was all uh, used shoes. And uh, you can find a lot of really nice clothes. You can find a lot of really nice furniture. Now, I know a lot of people will say, oh, I'm terrified of bed bugs and furniture. Listen, you got to get over that. That's the news trying to scare you over nothing. <sighs> Really? I mean, and I totally get it. I'll get 15 people say, well, I got bed bugs. You don't, I totally understand that, but you could get bed bugs from a lot of things, not just buying used furniture. And so for used furniture, what I do is, um, I go in and I check the furniture. I pull off the, uh, couch cushions. I look and see if I see droppings or little black things all over the furniture. Ew. Lift the furniture up, look underneath. What condition is it in underneath? Is there any black stuff underneath? Anything like that? So that's how I check it. And then if you're really concerned, you can, and you just don't have the money and you think it might have something, bring it home, put a tarp on it, set a bug bomb off, let it sit under there for a week and then set another bug bomb off. And that will get rid of most of it. And all the used uh, furniture we've ever looked at, though, real closely, we never found any. I've never had found. any. No. Yeah. This video is brought to you guys by our Dining on a Dime cookbooks. Our Valentine's Day sale is right now, our Volume 1 and Volume 2, and our Gluten-Free, Dairy-Free Edition, which we are getting low on stock. So if you're really wanting our Gluten-Free, Dairy-Free Edition, we have them on order, but... Um, I can't guarantee they won't sell out before we get the next batch, which will probably be um, another what, eight weeks. Gluten free? Yeah, probably another eight weeks before you get gluten free. All right. Um, 
And yeah, I mean, somebody said on here, Phyllis, there's no guarantee that new furniture doesn't have bed bugs. Yeah. I mean, and so people use those excuses a lot at, I won't buy a new car because I'm afraid it's going to break down. That is just an excuse. I know people who have bought brand new cars and whatever it was that was broken, um, wasn't covered by the warranty and was a ridiculous into the thousands of dollars repair. And so buying a used car, there's nothing wrong with buying a used car. Most used cars uh, are fairly reliable. Look at the reviews, especially older ones. You'll have really good reviews. We stick with Toyotas because we know that we have really good um, success with them and, and they don't need a lot of repairs. And so people use breaking down for used cars. Well, I have to get to work. Okay, well, you can take the bus. You can take a taxi. You can borrow a friend from a, a car from a friend or a family member. You could walk. You could get an Uber, Lyft, whatever. Nowadays, it's not like it was a long time ago when, you know, you were just stranded if you didn't have a car. And even back then, it really wasn't that big of a deal. And so used cars are another huge way to save literally thousands and thousands of dollars. People always say, oh, I wish I was lucky like you to have a really nice house like you. Let me tell you, that luck had nothing to do with it. All the money that I would have spent on buying new cars and paying the interest on car loans went into my house so I could have a nice house and be really lucky. There's no luck. We've spent less work. money on all the cars we've ever had combined than most people spend on one vehicle. Yeah, we yeah. really have. I mean, I can't imagine we have spent, especially with all our wrecks and everything, we haven't spent more than probably $15,000 on cars over 28 years because... We bought them so cheap that when we would wreck them, or let me rephrase that, someone would wreck into us <laughs> when we were in Colorado and had 11 accidents in three years, um, or the hail, uh, they would, we would pay, let's say, $3,000 for a car, and they would give us like $6,500, $7,000 for it, depending on the vehicle. But still... <laughs> We earned money off our cars after driving them for, you know, a few years or a little while. So my biggest thing is buy, use, guys, put your comments and questions in the, or put your questions in the comment section and Mike will get them for me. But yeah, uh, <laughs> Jane from the country, our goal is to pay off our mortgage in 2023. Yeah, ours is too. Yeah. Yeah. We were just talking about that tonight. Mike was looking at um, statistics on our videos and we're like, oh, which videos are doing the best so we can do some more of those and get our house paid off quicker. Because, <laughs> you know, we, uh, we're we just bound and determined to do it. And so <clears throat> uh, that is my number one tip is to buy used. Now, What's another excuse? Oh, my kids are going to be made fun of if I don't, if I buy used. Oh, get over it. I'm sorry, but it's not like the old days where you would buy used and it was torn and had holes and that kind of thing. And um, nowadays you can get some really nice, even with new in the tags, clothes at the thrift store and shoes for that matter. Um, so don't let that um, don't let that stop you. Your kids can just toughen up a little bit. It's not going to hurt them or anything um, to buy used clothes. We of course get new underwear, not when they're little, but when they're older, we get new underwear. But toddlers, I just bought used underwear and bleached it, and you were good to go. You know, so you didn't really have to worry about it, but. Pretty much 90% of our clothes are used. Um, and, uh, and so, yeah, we go ahead and do all of that. Aloha says, my neighbor's moving, wants to know if I want her food in her freezer. Should I? Yeah. Heck yeah. I mean, you could probably get two or three hundred dollars worth of food at least, if not more, depending on what she's got in there. We knew some people that decided to go vegan and they said, do you want all the steaks in our freezer? We're like, Sure. Yep. <laughs> they gave us, oh my goodness, it was probably $500 worth of beef 
and that we oh that one yeah yeah it was i was thinking of something else yeah that one no they gave us 500 yeah they did too, yeah, more. yeah that i was thinking of somebody else but anyway um yeah <laughs> it was a good deal and i was like bring it on why not it's been frozen i wouldn't worry about it um so I would, I would take it all. So Tina wants to know, how do you find used cars? I'm a rural carrier for the post office and have to have a dependable vehicle. And all I found in the past two years has been almost as much as a new one. So unfortunately right now, that's just part of the problem with that thing going around causing um, car parts and stuff to not be good. We've been looking for three years, if not more, <laughs> for a vehicle. I will tell you, they're starting to go down now. I would definitely stick with Toyotas if you want something reliable. We have just had really good success with Toyotas. Um, just keep a lookout. I look every day on Upcycle and Facebook Marketplace for vehicles. And even though right now we're trying to wait until the house gets paid off um, before we buy a vehicle, if we happen to buy find a granny car or SUV or something, and grandma's just driven it to church or something, we'll we'll jump on it. Those are the kind that we usually, I don't know how many of those we've bought. We've bought a lot of those. Well, and the trick is you have to look at, you have to be prepared to look at a lot of them. Yeah. I would say we usually look at 10 or so before we're 15. About 10 or 15, yeah. Before we find one that we just can't find anything wrong with it and it seems amazing. Yeah. Yeah. But, and people say, well, I don't have time to do that. Okay, so let me get this straight. You don't have time to save $20,000? by looking at several cars. I mean, the actual amount of time that we spend shopping for a new car, I probably spend one or two minutes a day looking at Facebook Marketplace and Upcycle. And then let's say the 10 cars we went and looked at, it takes us an hour for each car to go look at it. You can pretty much determine right away. Like the last one we went and looked at, they said it was new and it was clean and all that. And we got in it and there was dog hair everywhere and there was stuff that was broken. And we're like, yeah, no. We yeah, went when we went to the tires were all flat when we got there. And I was thinking, what? And when we went to and the guy was talking about, yeah, uh, you'll have to take it down and put some gas in it. I was thinking, yeah, I'm not putting gas in your car. <laughs> so you can tell right away for the majority of them if they're going to be even something you want to continue to pursue or not. And so literally less than 10, 15 hours worth of work and we save twenty to $30,000. Heck yeah, that's worth it. My goodness. You can't even say that's not even close to being worth it. Um, so yeah, um, put your questions in the car, in the comments, guys. Um, and I will have Mike send them to me and we will talk about them. Suzanne says a hundred dollars a month car payment for five years is ridiculous. Plus insurance. I refuse to pay a car truck payment. Well, yeah, now they're showing car payments that are in the 1000 to $1,500 range. Wow. Are you kidding payments? me? And you wonder why you're poor and you wonder why you're living paycheck to paycheck. I'm sorry. That is just sheer stupidity. That is just sheer stupidity. My mom always said, oh, we don't use the word stupid. I am sorry. The word stupid needs to be used more frequently now to wake people up with their absolute ridiculous word. buying habits. I just couldn't believe it. Well, so, just because sometimes people do stupid things doesn't mean you're calling them stupid. No. <laughs> well, there's some people, but we won't go there. <laughs> I'm, kidding. I'm just kidding, guys. So <clears throat> buying used is the best way to go, guys, unless it's buying our dining and dining goods for Valentine's Day, guys. 35% off for our Valentine's sale right now. We got volume one, volume two, totally different recipes, teach you how to cook and save money on your grocery bill. I guarantee it will save you your first trip to the grocery store. It does. Every single person says it. And our gluten-free, dairy-free, if you have to be gluten-free, dairy-free like I am, you will um, definitely save money. All right. I will and, have and Mark. why are the used not better? Huh? Why are the used not a better price? 
the the books dining on a dime because people are selling them for like anywhere from 90 to 900 dollars on ebay and amazon I I some people know. call us and say are you trying to rip us off selling your book for nine hundred dollars? I'm like, that's not us. That's someone who bought it from us, and then years later wants to sell it. Yeah, that's we have people who actually buy the cookbook, <laughs> and then they turn around and put it on eBay and um, uh, Amazon. Yeah, hardcover, seventy five dollars, right there, sixty dollars. Wow. So let me tell you, you're getting a darn tun good deal buying them brand new, and that's the other thing. Make sure it's not cheaper to buy brand new. Like with our Dining on a Dime cookbook right now, it's $75 on Amazon. Well, you can get it new for half that. And so people just need to research their uh, prices and see if it's actually a good deal or not, because it may not. Yep, here you go, $61 on eBay. <laughs> oh, that's hilarious. Oh my goodness, that's totally hilarious. Okay, okay, we're doing a show. No shopping. Wow, $96 <laughs> on eBay. <laughs> so they think we're something special. See, they know the truth, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, send me the comments, send me the questions, dear, and I'll start getting to the questions. Um, somebody said, I was wondering on my house comment about being lucky. I was wondering if they were willing to do the work that you were willing to do for your house. No, they're not. And that's one thing that really frustrates me to no end is when people say we're lucky. No, we have always kept our grocery bill down. We don't buy soda that often. We do buy it, but not like normal people. We wait until Labor Day and Thanksgiving and Memorial Day when it goes on sale and then we'll get six or eight cases of 12 and that'll last us till the next sale. So, um, so, and then we pay 250 for 12. So we don't, you know, we don't spend a whole lot, but, um, but we don't go out to eat except for date night now until we had our house paid off. We didn't have date night, you know, and now our house is almost paid off. So we're doing date night, but we don't have as many kids at home either. So, <laughs> but, um, you know, we always drove used cars. The only vacations we took were to family for most of our married life. We did go a couple of times to Silver Dollar City for a vacation. Um, it's awesome. We love it. Yeah. And then uh, I took a vacation one time after we got some car accident money because it was a very, very stressful time. It was Mike's when our uh, niece moved in with us and then our, my in-laws had us in court and that was when we had the 11 car accidents in three years. And it was an extremely stressful time. Well, one of the car accidents, I got a pain and suffering check for. And so I did spend $1,000 and went and sat in a hotel for a month to try and recover for a little bit. But it's not like we went every year and spent ten or $15,000 going to Disney every year. We just, we never did those things. And so we were able to afford our house. Um and pay for it. And so now we have a really nice house because we've worked our buns off for almost 30 years. So anyway. and even now what's funny is it becomes a habit. So even now we could spend more on some things, but we don't. Yeah. And it's actually made other things more possible. Like Tara's, like the kitchen being redone. We can afford that because even when we could afford to spend money on kind of frivolous things, we didn't really do it unless they were super important yeah. to us in that moment. Yeah. And like, you know, we're doing our kitchen remodel <clears> right <throat> now and it's going to cost us a pretty penny. Wait till you guys hear how much it costs. But even with that, I've probably saved close to $10,000 by going to the restore in the last month. I've been to the restore to the thrift store that sells the uh, renovation stuff like sinks and carpet and all that. And I have probably saved close to $10,000, but I've made in the last 30 days, probably 20 to 25 trips to the, to the restore every day, going and checking and seeing if they have something that I need for the remodel. And so <clears throat> it's, it's work, you know, and I just discovered that all my tile that I got for 20 cents 
and saved myself two fifty a tile. Mm -hmm. Each one has a sticker on it. And now I got to sit and peel the sticker off of each one of those. Oh, too bad Ellie is not with us still. <laughs> Our daughter but, used to peel everything when she was little. Thankfully, I have learned of a easy method of getting stickers off a tile. So I'm going to use that method. And hopefully it'll go quick. I hope. Uh, so that So sometimes frugal things can backfire on you. But that's not an excuse to not do it. <clears throat> Aloha ha says, hi from Wyoming. So she must be down south. Yeah, down by Cheyenne. How is your market book trip going? Actually, I'm headed to Cheyenne tomorrow. She's so. our Hawaiian friend in Cheyenne. Ah, uh, so from I'll... Hawaii to Wyoming. Oh. That would be a good YouTube channel. <laughs> there you go. That would be a good YouTube channel. Uh, we have some friends headed to Hawaii, and I thought, oh, we could go to Hawaii maybe for our vacation to relax. I've never been to Hawaii. Are they letting people in Hawaii now again? Because I know you used to have that thing and you couldn't get in. Um, of course, now that, that thing's killing you more than that other thing that caused you to have to get that thing. Maybe they have opened it now. Uh, how did my trip go? I don't know. I'm leaving and going tomorrow. So, And I'm going to hit the thrift stores down there and the home improvement stores down there to see if I can get any good deals for the remodel while I'm down there too. So it's going to be a long day. So, and Missy said, hello, Tarji. Hi, Tarji. You are less than that. That's funny. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> okay. Looking for old, Missy says, I'm looking for old donuts. I hate bread pudding. Um, well, first of all, you can nuke them in the microwave and re-soften them, and that helps a little bit. But if you don't like bread pudding, <sighs> make French toast out of them. Cut them in half and make like a donut French toast. That might work. I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. And if you need French toast, Dining on a Dime Cookbook, Volume 1. Or if you want French toast sticks made out of donuts, that would be really good. Volume <clears> 2, 35% <throat> off right now for our Valentine's sale, guys. Oh, while we're here, while we're talking about that, Tina asks, remind me, is Volume 1 the same as your cookbook that was spiral bound? Yes. Yes. It's, it's, mm -hmm. If you had the 20th anniversary edition, it's the same. If you had older spiral bounds, they, this has a few more recipes. 40 more recipes? Yep. Yeah. Uh, Suzanne says we could all learn a lot from those who lived through the Great Depression. Yeah, we could. That's probably, that's why mom and I are so frugal because I had 11 grandparents when I was born and they were all through the Depression. So they were all pretty frugal. I don't think, I, know, I didn't have one grandparent that was not frugal. All of them were. Totee's Adventures. Tara, guess how I've been buying brand new clothes with tags on them. I've joined two dumpster dive channels, auctions, and get new clothes for pennies on the dollar. Oh, there you go. That's another way to do it. Afton, Wyoming. Hey, we've got a lot of Wyoming people. Hello, Tana. Tana? Mm -hmm. Tana? Mm -hmm. uh, I think secondhand lasts longer than brand new. Yes. So here's the thing. She said... Um, what I think all the time, if it makes it to the thrift store and it's in really good condition, then it's probably still going to be in good condition for quite a while. So, you know, I look for older L.L. Bean and Eddie Bauer type stuff when they made it really quality. And that stuff does last. Uh, Sherry says, I'm a street dumpster diver and I have found beautiful stuff. Yes, we dumpster dive all the time and find tons of good stuff. Barbara, Polly. Oh, we love you, Barbara. We have Dollar Date, Goodwill, Color of the Week. Oh, well, there you go. She'll make a list of things and go back and get them on that day. Yeah. I, our thrift stores here, they have certain days where they mark things down or it's 50% day. One thrift store has free day. They're kind of, they're my sketchy thrift store that I'm always talking about. <laughs> but they're, they're, uh, they're packed with stuff. I mean, they just are packed with stuff. So they, every now and then they have free day where they just have everybody just come get what they want just to get rid of it and make room for new stuff. Laura Richards. Hello, Laura. She says, I, oh, good cookbooks. I love mine. Well, thank you. Sharon, I got cookbooks volume one and two. This is my third time buying, buying volume one because they keep going home with my daughter. It's funny how many people say that. It's funny how many people have to keep rebuying the books because they're their kids 
yeah. uh, adopt them. I don't know. There's words that some people use to describe when their kids take them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Pet thieves. Yeah. <laughs> Just kidding. No kidding. Sorry, that was a joke for Lord of the Rings fans. <laughs> That's funny. Um, wow, you guys are all over today from all over the country. Wow, welcome everyone. Thank you so much. <sighs> M. Pennington says, hmm, I've got your original cookbook with the spiral binding. It's vintage now, right? Maybe I should see what I could get for it on an eBay auction. If I guy, no. guy guys, when Mike has a cookbook sale to get them all out of the garage, you buy them and put them on eBay because I know they're going to be valuable. Then. <laughs> she says, no, nah, I use it a lot, so I'll keep it. Although you could sell the collector's item when I buy a new one for less. <laughs> we, yeah. I, well, Tara mentioned it with cars. She mentioned uh, cars when they got crashed. Uh, the insurance was more than the car, but we actually bought a lot of cars, drove them for six or seven years and sold them for more than we paid. So, <laughs> I mean, that's, if you can do that, that's great. Yeah. And we tell everybody if there's something that we tell them if there's something that we don't like about it, why we're selling it, like, Oh, well, something's wrong with the whatever. And we can't figure it out. And they still buy it. Not all of them, but most of our cars we've actually made money on. Um, Simple guy, simple life says, take advantage of end of season clearance sales. Oh my goodness. Yes. Like right now be buying all your winter clothes for next year. Walmart's getting them all in clearance. Maurice's is putting them all in clearance. All those places. Yeah. Uh, Phyllis says my Goodwill is pathetic. Yeah. I have found that most, most Goodwills are pathetic. I, like I said, I've only shopped at one and that was only for furniture. The clothes were ridiculous. I'm sorry. I'm not paying $8 for a pair of used pants. That's ridiculous. So yeah. And I have to say, we were really concerned when we moved here because we were like, oh man, we're not gonna, are we gonna have our good thrift stores? We have really good thrift stores and really good garage sales here. I mean, we just feel so excited and blessed because that was a concern of mom and I's was, okay, are we gonna be able to find the things that we, that we normally shop for at the thrift store here? So um yeah all right Ooh. sorry guys i'm tired um denise says use your cell phone flashlight on corners and seams for used furniture oh yeah that's what about looking for the yeah that's a really good way to find those bugs and and see what kind of condition it's really in because even if they've carpet cleaned it and if I walk into their house, even if they've cleaned the furniture and their house smells like dog pee, I won't buy it. Sorry. But if it smells like dog or cat, nope. I turn around and say, oh, thank you. It's not for me. And I leave. Um, I do not buy anything. Sorry. But I don't buy anything with animal stuff on it. Or if I know it had animal stuff on it. So... I've gotten a couple of things and I didn't realize it till it was too late, but I cleaned it and that's fine. But if pet friendly home, when you see that on furniture, on the use on the resale sites, that's a big no. I don't care how pet friendly you are. I ain't buying the furniture because you just, uh, it's hard to clean. Yeah. It's hard to make the smell right. go away yeah. from it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> The Ruck Farm says, I hadn't been to Goodwill for maybe two years and decided to go this past week. I had sticker shock and everything. Yeah, I bet. They're raising, they had high prices anyway. I haven't been in there for what, probably four or five years, but they had high prices anyway. Um, Kathy says, thank you for all the, all you do. Good advice. God bless you and your family. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. M. Dilworth says, is it easy to substitute dairy products in your gluten-free cookbook? I would just need it for the gluten-free recipes so it, it's gluten-free dairy-free cookbook so all of the milk used in here is dairy-free and yes if you have other allergies like you can't do almonds or soy or whatever um you can substitute pretty much any milks so like you can use rice milk instead of soy or almond or cashew or oat or whatever and it i can't think of a recipe that it doesn't work for. 
Grammy midwife. Good day. Grocery shopping today. $154 to stock up. Shank ham for 99 cents a pound. Ooh, pork chops, $1.99 and milk, $2.95. Ooh, speaking of which, I keep forgetting to get milk. <laughs> um, that's a really good deal. If you go to Walmart tonight, should I have you pick some up? I will. Um, Phyllis. Oh, yes. Uh, that was, I answered that. San Sandy says we found chicken leg quarters for 69 cents a pound. Yep. They're all over the place. Yep. And Marlene, how much pancake mix and water did you use to make the mini muffins? I just put a little bit of water in there, stirred it up until it looked like a muffin mixture consistency, a thick batter. Tina. Uh, oh, yeah. We answered that one. Tanya, I love free food. My son's school gave everyone a bunch of food around Christmas. Then he took a bunch more home because the other kids would leave theirs at school. Yeah. Yeah. During that thing going around the school, just so wasteful, but <laughs> the school was giving away free lunches for the entire family all during that thing going around. So we would go get it. Well, not the whole thing, but it was like the first six months or something. So I would go get it for the family. My taxes were paying for it and my kids weren't using the school. So I was like, I have no problem going and getting it. And they had so much left over. There were days they were like, here, you want more? You want more? Because we're just, we can't do anything with it. And I didn't have to buy apples and oranges for months. I mean, it was, or milk. I had tons of milk frozen. So, yeah, I mean, get free food whenever you can, I would say. Well, not whenever you can. Like I said, I have a whole food bank issue with people using food banks for that kind of thing. But when the school's giving away food and my taxes are already paying for the school and I can't even use the school, you better believe I'm going to get something out of it. So, especially as much taxes as we're paying in Colorado is ridiculous. Mary Beth. Uh, I always get clothes with original store tags from there. Goodwill, I guess she means. I don't pay more than one or two dollars. Hey, that's great if your Goodwill is a good place. I just have not found a Goodwill. I have lived in, what, five different states? Four or five different states, and I have never found a Goodwill that was really worth anything. Um, I think they got famous when we were kids because they were cheap back then. I guess. Way back in the dark yeah. ages. Pam John, we bought two used cars and they both <clears> had roaches <throat> in them. We won't go back there again. Well, I'd never buy from a dealer, ever. I always buy from uh, purse or what do you call it? Private sales, I guess. But we do have a list of um, requirements for <laughs> buying used cars, and uh, we're very we're pretty careful about how we buy them. So, um, all right, let's see. Kiplin, how do you get rid of chemical smell from clothes that are bought from the thrift store? Sometimes it hangs on even after washing. I have never had that problem, but wash it with maybe some vinegar. You could probably put some baking soda and or. I wouldn't put and or. I would do baking soda or vinegar in your wash. But yeah, if you're worried or really worried about it, pour a cup, two cups of baking soda in your washer fill it up with water and let your clothes soak overnight if you can. Or borax would probably work too. Um, Christy says my two teen boys bought used cars last year for $200 or for $2,200. Excuse me, the next ones. Um, yes. and 3000. Yeah. You can still find them. We're just, we're wanting a Highlander right now, I think is what we're looking for. And so, um, it's going to be a little bit more expensive, but yeah. So Sorry, I was answering one question about ordering. Um, one person was asking about ordering the books. If she doesn't want to use a credit card, uh, are they available in stores? And I said, they're not in the stores, but you can send a check or money order. Uh, to Living on a Dime, P.O. Box 6837. P.O. Box 6837, Sheridan, Wyoming, 82801. <laughs> Be sure to add shipping. Oh, I forgot to call that one lady. That uh, and it, there are... If you go well, basically, if you just add it to the cart on the inter on the internet, and just don't don't get don't put your payment information in, but it'll give you a total before then, including the shipping. Uh huh. And that'll that's the best way to find out how much the shipping is. Yeah. Um. I have sent you more. Okay. 
I was looking at email I got from Barbara Polly about inflated prices. Oh my. <laughs> uh, Roos, Kyle Rooster says great deals are only online for a very short time. You have to be ready to buy ASOP. Yes. That's why you get your finances under control. Cause once you get your finances under control, then when a good deal comes around and you have the cash to pay for it, then that's even a better good deal. So like we have the cash to pay for a new used car, a new car to us, a used car. So we can pay $15,000 cash instead of paying $40,000, $50,000 for a new car with a loan or even a used car with a loan. So yeah, definitely. We spend less and then we buy a bigger house. Well, actually, we don't really buy a bigger house. We wouldn't keep buying bigger houses, but a house has been more valuable to us than cars. Yeah. 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 Grammy, what are your thoughts on full coverage insurance on a used car that is paid off by dropping to liability? Take extra money to save for one if it's wrecked. What are you, well, I mean, you just have to figure it out. So like in, when we lived in Colorado, this is just an example, <clears throat> but it's not far off. Like when we lived in Colorado, our insurance was say $100 a month for liability. And for full coverage with hail and all that, it was like $110 a month. It, it was just a tiny bit more. Well, we knew that living in Colorado, our chances of the chances of our hail of our cars getting hit by hail and ruined by hail was almost a hundred percent. So we opted to pay the extra ten dollars, which was like thirty dollars a month for the cars. And sure enough, cars got hailed on. The insurance company totaled them gave us a check for more than we paid for it. So it was way worth it. So you just have to sit and figure is that savings enough that it's worth you putting in the bank to save for later. If it is fine, but it may not be. This is the car insurance thing, right? Well, also uh, they will only pay the amount that the used car is worth. <laughs> so we ran into a problem where we bought a, uh, a much older station wagon or not station wagon van that uh, we paid more than its book value was worth because it was in immaculate, pristine condition. We thought this is going to last a really long time. And then somebody crashed into us and the insurance company wouldn't give us what we paid for it. So that's one thing to consider. Uh, and if you do buy something used, uh, if, if you keep full coverage on it, if you buy something like, you know, $800 worth of tires or something, then uh, you should keep the receipt for that. Because within a certain amount of time after that, you can argue that the, that should be added to the price. And in a lot of states, the, the insurance company has to have you sign a document saying that, you know, you've accepted their offer. And so I would not accept it until you get what you think is right on that. Uh, <clears throat> for years, though, we didn't have any. We just thought, well, we're only going to have liability because if someone hits us, their insurance will pay. But in Colorado... There were a lot of drivers that didn't have any insurance. So, uh, and there was one other good thing. When we had the full coverage, we found out that the, uh, when somebody hit our niece and hers was full coverage, and our, their, the lady confessed to the officer on the scene that it was her fault. But then uh, all the government agencies weren't really going because it was, was it about that time? Mm -hmm because of the whole thing going around. And uh, so then when, it, when they finally passed the information on to the company's, um, her company, they were arguing that it was our niece's fault. And so we sort of struggled with that. And then we found out that if you have the full coverage, the insurance company, our insurance company would fight for us on that instead of us having to deal with it. Yeah. Um... Mary says, my friend gave us pork chops, ham, sausages, and bacon. She got an FFA pig. You couldn't eat all the pork, about 30 pounds for free. Wow. She said her husband had just got laid off. God provided. That's great. Yeah. See, God works like that all the time. All the time. Um, Andy, work for a financial institution, just had the best year ever in loans for vehicles, paying over invoice, just had to have at 120% of loan to, oh my goodness, don't even get me started on that. I know, I know for, for I feel like go, if I wasn't going to Cheyenne tomorrow, I would be going to Walmart tomorrow because I tell you, I'm going to go and start filming people's baskets 
because for the way people are talking about how bad food inflation is, they are sure not curbing their spending on the fun stuff. It's crazy. Now, if you really want to save money, go check out our Valentine's sale for Dining on a Dime cookbooks. We're 35% off right now, guys. It's our Valentine's sale right now. Livingonadime.com. If you really want to save money in your grocery bill, <laughs> grab our cookbooks because they will help you save money in your grocery bill. Um, let's see. Are you going to have a sale on the ebooks anytime soon? Uh, maybe St. Patrick's Day, but I'm not sure yet. Linda, hello from Oklahoma. What do you think about formation, fermentation for veggies? You go right ahead and do it. If you like doing it, it's fine. I am allergic to mold. And when the doctor put me on a GAPS diet and I had to eat fermented vegetables, it made me horridly ill. So if you're not allergic to mold, that's fine. But if I mean, it is moldy food. It's just moldy food. They don't ever say that. They say it's fermented or sprouted. Well, not sprouted, but all those other fancy words. Call it kombucha and whatever. No, you're drinking mold. And so, <laughs> or bacteria. You're drinking bacteria. And so, it's like, that's fine. If, you're, if you could drink that stuff or eat that stuff, go ahead. I don't have a problem with it. But for me, it makes me horribly sick. So, I'm not a big fan, as you can tell. Uh, Cindy, he's all this quote, until you work as hard as those you admire, don't explain away their success as luck. Yeah, no kidding. Oh my goodness. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Uh, oh, Connie, we love your books and advice. We bought four more of our cookbooks for our adult kids. Thank you. They all love them, she said. Oh, awesome. Hello, Wendy in Montana. Yes. Hello, <clears throat> neighbor. We haven't been to Billings forever. Man, it's yeah, it's been like a that. year since we've been to Billings, which is surprising. We've been going south more this time instead of north. Last year we were at Billings all the time. <clears throat> yeah. Well, we finally got a bank account here, so we don't have to go for paying for our books anymore. That but... the, yeah, that was the main thing. Michelle, when my son started driving heavy, I found him a used car, paid cash. Love that his car was one year older than him. It was 1988. <laughs> he drove it from 16 to 22. Oh, that's great. And Pennington, I've got your original cookbook with spiral. Oh, yeah, we said that one. Sorry, Maria. Are they selling used products at the restore or is it items that have been overstocked? It's used products. So like if people tear out their kitchen sink or remodel or whatever, I personally, I go resell my stuff. I don't donate it unless I just can't sell it because I use that money then to pay for my remodels. So um, <clears throat> the Ruck Farm, use a razor blade and lemon essential oil. Any residue that's left on your tile. Actually, don't use lemon essential oil. Just any oil will work. And you can also just use hot water. Works just fine. And so, yes. Uh, but I think I've tried, I tried it on one. I think it's going to work. If you take a blow dryer or a heat gun and heat the sticker up first, then it just totally comes clean. So that's what I'm going to try. I'm going to do a video on that. So. Uh, Mama B says our restore starts selling new items such as furniture. Yep. There you go. Uh, oh yeah. Kathy says use a heat gun to remove the stickers. That's what I'm going to do. I think that's the easiest way I've moved. I removed tons and tons of stickers in my life, like tons. And the heat gun is actually the best process. And even if you live in a warmer climate than Wyoming, or if it's Wyoming in the summer, you don't even need a heat gun. I could, if it, if this was, if we were doing this in July, I would just set all the tile out let the sun warm it all day. And then before the sun went down and it, and it was really nice and hot, just take a razor and scrape it off. So, yep. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's, ooh, Sydney. Is that Australia? Yep. We were just talking about you today. Our contractors used to live in Australia for a little bit and they were telling us about it, about it how did. it's different there. Oh, I wasn't here for that one. Yeah, they were talking about how it's different there. Uh, gluten-free donuts. You know, did I put gluten? I don't think I put gluten-free donuts in here. I probably should have because you have to have a special donut hole um, donut maker. But I keep seeing the donut maker at three store. So maybe I should just go and pick up the donut maker and make a recipe for gluten-free donuts. I can't remember if I did or not. Let's just look here briefly, shall we? No, I did not put donuts in this volume. I was going to actually put it in volume two for gluten-free if I ever got it done, but that's not going to happen. So anyway, um, 
Cheryl, when my son wanted to go get a hamburger, I told him, do you want to eat tonight or would you like to eat all next week? Uh-huh. That's good. <laughs> that's a great answer. Um, okay. I'm so sorry. I have no idea how to pronounce your name. It starts with an R, but I'm wondering how many Europeans find your content attractive. Majority of your tips work well with worldwide. Actually, we have a very large Canadian, European, Australian, South African following. We have a lot of people all over the world following us. Can you send me the next ones? Uh, Wendy says, prepping your white chili. Oh, my prize winning. I got number one. I won first place for my white chili recipe in Dining on a Dime Volume 2. I won first place for that. And roast it's recipes now. Too. It is so good. The problem is it uses cream and we're off of dairy now. So, <laughs> Saab, I appreciate your prayers. I've been having memory issues at 36. Ooh, dear. That is not good. Yes, we will. Kimberly, I have very high prices at my thrift stores these days. I think they're trying to count all the people that I buy and resell on eBay. Yeah, that's true. A lot of people are doing that. And I found Pyrex for a dollar at mine the other day. But my, we have three, we have three church thrift stores here. And all of those are super cheap, like super, super cheap. So you guys might look and see if any churches have like basement thrift stores like the methodist church here has a basement that's not used and so they uh, have a thrift store down there and that's a really good way to save on money uh jim are we gonna have a party when the house is paid off i don't know, i guess we should yes we? yes yes <laughs> actually so we paid off our last house <clears throat> and um for probably the first month or month and a half, it didn't sink in that it was paid off. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of anticlimactic feeling because you're kind of like, oh, you work, 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 and oh, it's done. Okay, now what? It wasn't. <laughs> it's not until you start having more money coming in yeah. because they, you don't have to spend it on anything. So then, two years later, when we had a very healthy bank account to put even more down on this house, then it sunk in. <laughs> so yeah, we kind of that was i mean we had a lot of money extra to put down on this house because we were paying more than just our payment on the house to get it paid off so uh dk set says i made your pecan pie yesterday yesterday with jill's pie crust yes mom's pie crust is the best pie crust you will ever eat it's amazing ever my husband said to tell you that it was the best pecan pie he has ever eaten. Exactly. I didn't even read the rest of your comment. But every single person, I don't even like pie crust. Because everybody makes nasty pie crust, except my mom. So, there you go. Kudos to mom for making good pie crust. And now I can't eat it. <laughs> Mint to prep. Any good auto insurance companies? I mean, we use, we've we been with Allstate for years. I would definitely say stay away from Strike Farm. I would not even go near State Farm. But I had, um, They're very expensive, and I had to sue them because they refused yeah. to pay on a legitimate claim for me yeah. 20, 30 years ago. The Ruck, and I've heard a lot of people say that. The Ruck Farms, a video filming you critiquing shopping baskets would be funny. I know. I thought about offering to pay people like 10 bucks or something if I could just take a picture of their shopping basket. <laughs> go around Walmart, see if I can get 20 or 30 of those for a video. Mm -hmm. Ooh, the problem is I live in a small town <laughs> and I don't want to like insult anybody <laughs> and say, what are you thinking? Because so we need to go to another town. That too. We should go to Gillette. Yeah. Nobody Maybe knows I should do there. it tomorrow in Cheyenne. Maybe I should do it tomorrow in Cheyenne. I was because say, that might not be, Gillette might not be far enough away because Wyoming is one small town with long roads. Because, <laughs> you know, I don't want to be a dork to people in person or really nice. I mean, I'll be a dork to you guys on camera. <laughs> Sorry. But, you know, I, I, I want to be considerate of people's feelings. So I'm not just going to go around saying, well, how stupid can you be buying $200 worth of drinks in your, in your cart? But, you know, so anyway, yeah, Kathy, wow, another live. That's one way to pay off your mortgage early. Actually, that's why we have lives every single day now. Well, not every single day, but 
most weekdays now when we're running a sale because we sell so many more <coughs> books. I'm not I'm not hiding it from you. We sell so many books, dining on a dime cookbook, 35% off right now, living on a dime.com. <laughs> but but we sell so many more doing live. And it's a way for us to get our house paid off. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna hide that. But you know but, how we discovered it though is we we were thinking <laughs> it would be fun to do more lives every now and then, uh, but we just didn't think we could do it all the time. So we just accidentally did it in September. while we were in a sale. We thought, oh, yeah, wow, okay. We were actually experimenting in September to see if going live every day was easier or less work than filming videos. And we happen to be having a, a Labor Day sale that we totally forgot. And like, I don't know, like 10 minutes before we started the sale, I was like, uh, it's Labor Day. We should be having a sale. <laughs> Mike's like, oh, okay. So he spent that day getting it up. I think it was Labor Day, wasn't it? Maybe. I think. I Something can't remember. Like it wasn't. It was a day or two before Labor Day. Maybe. And the first few days that we were doing the lives, nothing happened. And then all of a sudden it just went crazy. We thought, oh, Okay. Well, yeah. if we're going to do lives, we should do them when there's a sale. And we made a significant amount of change, let me tell you. Because we it was worth it. It's kind of fun to do them all for one week, um, but we can't sustain that for very long before we get completely wiped out. Yeah, it's pretty tiring <laughs> doing live shows. Um, Nikki, there you are. I was watching another one. I had a question, but you were making me laugh on your last video. Uh-oh. I, people say we're so funny. I don't know why we're so funny. I know people say that, but I don't see why we're so funny. I guess maybe just because we laugh about stuff, I guess. <laughs> we don't, yeah, we laugh about stuff a lot. We were talking about that with the contractors today, about people in Australia don't really have a sense of humor like we do here. What? Apparently they don't. They're very um, reserved. Actually, I do have to say that when we were, I know, I know, people think American tourists, but really we're not typical American tourists, but it was funny that when we were in, in London, I noticed on the tube, nobody would say anything to anyone and people would have, oh, this is a, the subway. For those who don't know, it's famously called the tube, but uh, everybody had their earbuds in and stuff. But I noticed that if, if something funny was going on, then somebody would crack a smile and then pretty soon people might say something. <laughs> Jack was kind of the one that kind of got everyone to melt a little bit because he's such a little cutie. Well, he was a little cutie. Now he's a really big cutie. <laughs> um, Sob, thank you again for the dig out of debt PDF. I lost my copy years ago and was so pleased to get a free copy. You're welcome. I'm so glad that you could have that. Uh, Grandma Merkel says, God has a wicked humor. Renter skipped out but left two toolboxes, dolly, and freezer and fridge. Oh, my goodness. Some people are just, Yeah. What are you going to, I mean, what do you say? Emmanuel, do you have a, a get started list for beginners for what? So, uh, wait, he, I asked him, he said for pantry supplies. Oh yeah. Go get our stockpile ebook. So that has a pantry supplies? Yeah. Uh -huh. okay. yeah go get our stockpile ebook and that'll tell you what uh, to get in there. Mike will put the link for you. He'll find it in just a minute. Um, Nikki. I, go ahead. Uh, we are just adorable. Mike, you have such a wonderful heart. Oh, oh, oh. Thank you. Rebecca, I find it funny you talking about people shopping carts. I always look at them. Funny hearing people complain they are eating less and can't lose weight and their carts are loaded with junk. I know. I know. Tell me about it. Kimberly, I've been watching some YouTube videos on how people are suffering through this and the way they feel they are entitled to the life that they have or should think that they should have it is ridiculous. I feel like saying, talk to people that survived the Great Depression or survived recession in the 70s, see how bad it off. Yeah, go talk to somebody in Syria right now and let's see how bad you are. Ugh, don't even, can you send me the next batch? Don't even get me started. Americans are just spoiled brats. It's just ugh. actually it makes me so mad. The other day I was praying about that because I was thinking even I even we because we're all because we're Americans. I mean, even the most even the least spoiled Americans still have it better than. <laughs> but you know how many people, especially Christians. So not even talking to non Christians, but especially Christians. How many Christians thank God for the little things that they give them every day? 
like the other day when Mike's brilliant idea wasn't working out and we had to totally change something. And I was like, great, what am I going to do on this? And I talked to the contractor and he said, well, what if you tried this? And I was like, they have one at the restore. I was just there yesterday, but I didn't have a car. Oh, so yeah. I ran down and got one. I ran down after Mike and the boys got home and they still had that thing that I needed. And I got it for $45 instead of $268. And I was like, thank you, Lord, for providing this for me to fix the solution so that I could save myself $200 on this. Now, a remodel is going to cost us a ridiculous amount of money. We totally get that. But, you know, if I can save as much as I can on stuff, I'm going to do that. And our contractors are great about reusing the old stuff and not having a problem reusing stuff. And as a matter of fact, today they were using a bunch of stuff for Mike's brilliant idea. And you know what? I was like, thank you for providing this for me. Or the other day when I went into a slide, I was like, thank you for not letting me total the car. Or when that deer jumped in front of the car, thank you for not letting me hit that, <laughs> that deer. But how many Christians sit and are thankful for those things? And so... Actually, it was really cool because the uh, contractors, Tar mentioned they're from South Africa and, uh, and their dad is here visiting and comes on the job with them so because he wants to be with his son, which I think is pretty awesome. But it was funny because one day he was talking about, I wake up every morning and I, I say, thank God for the feet I have that I can get out of bed and stand on and thank God for the hands that I can. And he was just all saying all this. And I thought, wow, that is amazing. I, I lay there and I think, let's see, I'm thankful for some stuff. What stuff? And he had so much stuff that I thought, wow, do we ever thank God for these things? Actually, I do <laughs> all the time. And I'm very appreciative. Or like the other day, I was thinking, thank you so much for letting us be able to move the, to this to this town. Thank you that the deer was not frozen to the ground when we had to drag it across our property out to the street. <laughs> thank you that it wasn't a buck that we had to drag. And it was just a younger deer, maybe a year old, that, that we were dragging instead of a full grown buck, you know. And so anyway, yeah, Dorothy, is there advice on in the gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook for one new trying to go gluten-free? Yes. If you could only get one, I, let me tell you, when I went, this is the gluten-free cookbook. I wish I would have had when I went gluten-free, what, 12 years ago, somewhere around there. Um, what's 2008? How long ago is that? 2008? 15 years ago. Has it been that long? Holy moly. So 15 years ago when I went gluten-free, this is the cookbook I wish I would have had. It is basic, normal foods. You're not going to have to go buy anything crazy. You can get everything at the regular grocery store now, especially because regular grocery stores have so much gluten-free now, but you can get regular groceries now. Um... Living with chronic health, did you make any changes to insurance when you had teen drivers? Uh, yeah, our wallet was cheaper. <laughs> well, not our wallet. The kids pay for their own um, insurance once they start driving. Um, but, well, okay, not once they start driving. So when we lived in Colorado, the kids had to drive to school. So we paid for their insurance until they graduated high school because they um, had to drive to school. But as soon as they graduated, they started paying all of their insurance and nothing changed. But our, we had three teen drivers and Mike and I all at once. And our, our bill was $2,500 every six months. Six months. And we also, yeah. our insurance lie. agent was really cool. And we would say, hey, are there any discounts we're not aware of that we should be adding onto this? And, and she was like, Oh, you know, there's a good student driver uh, discount, and there's a driver's ed. no history of accidents discount, and there's a this discount and that discount, and there's a discount for having your home and homeowners here, and and she just was adding all those discounts, and I think the bill was supposed to be like twice as much as we actually paid. Yeah. But uh, one of the things was uh, automatically debiting it out of your bank account, which mm -hmm. I don't really like to do with anything, but they were going to give us like a two thousand dollar discount. 
for that. Mm -hmm. So I thought, okay, I can do that. And I just can watch it really carefully when it's time for the money to be taken out. So yeah, it was yep. pretty, pretty tough with, te with four teenagers. Oh. on the shirts. Miranda, are you going to make your flower art easel? Yes. I am actually, I was just trying, I was, it's so funny you asked that. I was just thinking the other day, how can I secure that to the ground so it doesn't blow away here? Cause we get some really bad winds. So I was trying to figure out how I can, I think just rebar should hold it to the ground, but yes. Um, Kimberly, my aunt donated all her clothes to Goodwill. When she went shopping there, she saw a shirt that she really liked and realized she had donated it. I've done that myself. I have done that myself. And I was like, why did I get rid of that? And then I'm like, Tara, you're not buying it. You got rid of it for a reason. You're not going to rebuy it. <laughs> I know. Uh, oh, everybody says I should go incognito to Walmart. <laughs> That's People a good say, idea. Hi, Tara. <laughs> 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 Michelle, anyone love Rice Krispie Treats? Yeah, if you love Rice Krispie Treats or Dining on a Dime Cookbook has several variations, guys, all different kinds of ways to make Rice Krispie Treats. And you can make chocolate-covered cherry Rice Krispie Treats for Valentine's Day. We just put that oh, post on our website. Go check it out. Did you put that on the front page, livingonadime.com? I think so. Let me look real quick. Let Mike check and make sure. Uh, yeah, livingonadime.com. I think it's on there. Isn't that the Valentine's Day can candy recipes uh, and tasty treats? What is it? The chocolate covered cherry? The cherry um, Rice Krispie treats. Hmm. Let me is see. Is that in there? <gasps> oh, go put the Rice Krispie treats on right now for them and then they'll find I it. I will. Um, Julie, how long did it take you to pay off our house? So we moved a lot. So I don't know when you're counting paying off your house. So it took us eight years to pay off the last house from when we bought it. We bought it in 2011 and we paid it off in 2019. So it took us eight years. So, yeah. Uh, we spent a lot of time fiddling around and paying off $5 here and $10 there, nothing for a year. And then there's a point where we said, well, if we're going to do this, we have to get serious about it. And once we got serious about it, it didn't take that long, really. Yeah. Uh, okay, the Rice Krispie Treats. Jeannie says, the gluten-free recipes in our book are wonderful, especially the white bread. Yes, and I guarantee you, if you follow the white bread recipe exactly, it will turn out. You have to follow it exactly. Every time it fails, I go back and forth with the person until we find out they did something wrong. So make sure your yeast is good. Make sure your baking powder is good. Make sure you follow the high altitude directions if you live above 3,500 feet. So, yeah. Um, Karen says, I'm not gluten free, but I ordered your cookbook because I want to try it and see if I feel better. Yeah. Just do yourself an elimination diet and see if you could feel better. You know, what's funny is even if you're not, even if you don't, even if you don't have a problem with gluten, some of those recipes are pretty amazing. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're all they're all good, but some yeah. of them are better. Um, okay. Do you have more questions for me, or do you want me to keep going through? Uh, what do we use I, for health insurance? We use a medical sharing program, a Christian medical sharing program. Let's see. Let me. Sh dun, dun, dun. Um. Let's see, Elizabeth, do your contractors charge you change fees when you adapt your house plans? No, because they're by the hour for us. So we knew that our project was going to be, how do we say, difficult? <laughs> because it was going to be reusing old cabinets and stuff like that. So he gave us a ballpark estimate and said it would actually really be better for me to just charge you by the hour. So we are being charged by the hour for um, for the job. So what they did is they told us, well, uh, because we were we were a little bit noncommittal about a few of the things. They said uh, it's this we would charge this much an hour, and we think for your project it would be about this much. But then we added two things mike's brilliant idea and or do we already say what the other thing is on the other side of the room from mike's no brilliant idea what the thing that we're waiting for oh no well yeah <laughs> yeah we added two th two fairly big things um 
And so it's gone over what we were thinking and what we were originally thinking. But I had kind of in my mind thought, I've always heard that when you pay somebody for remodeling, it always costs more than you think. And so when I pay the bills, I budget a certain amount of money that I say, this money is designated for that project and we can't spend it on anything else. So, so we're, I've, I've been kind of keeping that aside. We're almost to what he estimated, aren't we? Yeah, but as I've been, but each month as we've been recalcul, as I've been recalculating my things I set aside, I haven't been lowering that number. Yeah. I, so I'm still but setting aside the amount we were originally going to pay, but I've been paying as we go to. Mike's brilliant idea. It's totally worth it. It's totally worth it, and and let's just say it really kind of threw the plans a curveball. So that's part of the thing. Um, okay. So did you send me the next batch here? I did send you some. Did you not get it? I got a, a three. I'm done with three. I think it was four. Did you not get that I did one? not get four. Oh, it just showed up. Sorry about that. Rock Farm says, made your gluten-free sandwich bread 35% off right now, guys. And the recipe is free at livingonadime.com for gluten-free sandwich bread. It was mind-blowingly delicious, That's but great. I immediately made a second loaf. I used instant yeast despite the warning and it worked. Okay, well, there you go. Um... Yeah, I can't wait to get my oven back because I'm tired of paying $7 for a loaf of bread right now. Really chaps my hide, but I don't have an oven right now. So, um, <clears throat> Sarah says, since I got your cookbook, my the first volume, my grandson wants to eat here all the time. Oh, that's great. <laughs> wow. We need to start promoting it as grandmas. Bring your grandkids home with our cookbook. Uh, everybody's saying there's good deals on Super Bowl. I am glad you're having them. I am not seeing them in my town at all, but that's good that you guys are finding them. That's great. That would be another thing to check for. Diane, I'm going to miss it when your house is paid off because I really enjoy the life chance. <laughs> I, I assume we, well, wouldn't, thank we you. wouldn't stop doing them then, probably. Probably not. No, I well, think we... Probably not. Maybe. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty tired. <laughs> I think we we would just we would be a little more laid back at life in general uh, yeah. at that point I think but I think we would still do the live the extra lives from time to time like yeah <laughs> like we're doing. Tanya says it's funny because you say what the rest of us are thinking regarding stupidity. I know. <laughs> I know. Don't get me started. How do you freeze onions? Debbie wants to know. I heard you peel, cut them, and vacuum seal them, but they are mushy, rotten. So they're not rotten, but they will be mushy. So you just use them in like cooking, like you can't use them raw. They're not going to be like your raw. They are going to be mushy. There's no way to, to freeze them without them being mushy. So, but you know, when you cook them, they get mushy. So Phyllis, I heard a gentleman on a podcast say he has a post-it note on his bedside table that says, what are you grateful for today? It's the first thing he sees when he wakes up. Yep. That's a great idea. Bathroom mirror, stick it in front of the toilet, whatever. Jeannie um, says the gluten-free recipes in the book are wonderful, especially the white bread. Thank you. I um, appreciate that. I, that was uh, that was a labor of love. I honestly, you can see the next batch. I honestly did not think I was going to find a gluten-free sandwich bread recipe. I tested over forty recipes, <laughs> found one that was so-so, started adapting. Or I mean, I tested over thirty recipes. Found one that was so-so, adapted it so that it wasn't so-so, so that it was great. But it took me 10 or 12 times to make it with the adaptations. And then when I did that, I forgot to write it down. I forgot to write my changes down. I had to make it two or three more times to make sure that it worked right. Um, There's only two more that I so far have gotten. So somebody said, Sherry asked this yesterday, how do you determine which interpretation of the Bible is correct word of God? There seems to be so many. So New Living Translation. I shared the link. New International Version. You shared a link. For I shared a link to our Christian okay. resources. Yeah. Go look on our Christian resources page. Um, we have them listed there. New King James Version. King James Version is fine, but that's hard for a lot of people to read. But New King James Version is fine. Um, English standard version. Yeah, there are a lot of good English translations. The main thing is that English is not the original language, so translations are all we have. 
but there are a lot of good translations. And the ones that we list there are some of those good translations. There are others that we didn't list that are also good. And I would say generally that uh, we recommend BibleGateway.com is a place that has a lot of Bible translations. You can look at verse and then switch translations while you're looking at that verse. Uh, and I trust their judgment on their on the translations there. But we have the five or six that we list on our page are the ones that we use the most. So I, I linked that page. Uh, and if, you, if you're watching this later, uh, it's our favorite Christian resources on our website right under the videos at the top. Connie says, so I didn't know we were so funny. I need to go reread my own book. <laughs> <laughs> she says, Dining at a Dime, Volume 2, page 318. If robbers ever broke into my house and searched for money, I would just laugh and search with them. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. <coughs> oh, Me hey, too. One other thing on the Bible translations. My personal favorites are the New Living Translation for reading because it's really easy and we share that with a lot of people and it's uh, it's really accurate too, but then New American Standard uh, is is word for word accurate, and so those two are the my favorite too. But if you look at our Christian resources, that's a little bit about each one and why we like it. And if you guys have ordered Bibles in the last few days, we are waiting for Bibles and envelopes to come. So we haven't forgot you. We just can't ship them because we don't have them yet because we ran out. So. Supposed to be here Monday. So Monday. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Patricia says, I baked from volume one the banana bread and forgot to add the bananas. But she immediately removed it from the oven and added them and it came out just fine. It was very good. Isn't that banana bread so good? Oh, man. Rita wants to know if they started putting the cabinets up yet. Well, they were supposed to today. <gasps> oh, my. Did you forget something? Uh oh. Stay away. From Home Depot's bare paint. Oh my goodness, I am so stinking ticked. I am so mad. I, mm, I am so glad. I had thought about asking Home Depot to do a sponsor on our kitchen remodel, and I am so glad I did not. Let me tell you what happened. I got their bare paint at Home Depot. Okay, it was supposed to, years ago, it was supposed to cover in one whatever. Well, it doesn't say that on the package now. Why? Because it's awful. Do not waste your money. $35 a gallon. And I have had to put four coats of paint on my ceiling that was primed with white. I am livid, absolutely livid. As a matter of fact, I am doing a review on it and putting a video out there. Do not waste your money on that paint. I am so stinking mad. I am so mad. And I bought five gallons, of course. I, the stuff is like water. It's literally dripping off the brushes. It is so awful. Now that I've got that off my chest. So the reason why they did not get the cabinets in today, like they were supposed to, was the two coats of paint that I put on yesterday weren't enough. And this morning I woke up and I'm like, is that shadows on the wall? And I was like, surely that's not shadows on the wall. And I'm like, wait a minute, is that shadows on the wall? It was not shadows on the wall. White primer and two coats of paint did not cover at all. As a matter of fact, the contractors were like, we have never seen such bad paint ever. It is awful. Absolutely awful. So that's my little PSA for the week. Do not use Home Depot's bare paint. Home Depot, I hope you hear this. Because I am ticked that I spent $170 on five gallons of paint. And I had to put four coats. Well, and the contractors were painting too. And it yeah. would have been cheaper for us to paint it more been cheaper for, paint. Yeah, it would have been cheaper for me to get paint, paint that works. Multiple layers too on what they were painting. So, but did they I put was the cabinets so up? mad. So no, they didn't get the cabinets up because we still don't have the whole thing painted. Wow. As a matter of fact, I have to go back into the kitchen today 
we put a third coat on today and it's still not enough. So on Sunday, when I get back, I'm going to go put a fourth coat on. We already did it on some sections that were really bad. We didn't do it on everything yet. We only did three on the majority and we're going to let it sit and see. I, I am so stinking mad. I could just spit nails. No pun Jim, intended. Jim says, get it together. People making Home Depot paint. <laughs> it's awful. It is just like painting with water. It, I, oh, I am so mad. I am so mad. Somebody said that the Walmart paint is Sherwin-Williams. Is that true? I don't know, but I've had, the Walmart paint is cheaper and I've had better luck with the Walmart paint than that stuff. Hmm. I was so mad. I was, <laughs> I was just, I, you can tell I'm not a happy camper. Because when you're paying somebody almost $60 an hour to be painting, you don't want to be putting four coats of paint on at a time. That's costing me so much money. I think I need to sue Home Depot to reimburse me. Oh, my goodness. As you can tell, I am well, very unhappy if we need about to buy this. More, can we buy a different? Brand? Yeah, I'm not buying any more from Home Depot at yeah. all. I'll just color match it at Walmart. It's ridiculous. My goodness. I just, oh, I am so <clears throat> mad. You could tell I am not. So, how's the project happy. going except for that? <laughs> Oh, you're just trying to get me off of my rent. I'm not done <laughs> renting yet. <laughs> um, yeah, see, 16 bucks at Walmart for the paint. Wow. Ugh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That makes me so mad. Okay, I'm done venting now. Um, probably not done venting now, but... <laughs> <laughs> At least you're honest. <sighs> yeah. Send Home Depot a bill. I'm telling you. So anyway, they were supposed to put the cabinets in today, but because we had to put four coats of paint on, we couldn't get it done today. So Monday they're putting the cabinets in. We got the problem with Mike's brilliant idea fixed mostly. And I have to actually pick up something for that at Hobby Lobby tomorrow. I hope I don't forget it. I wrote a note, but I hope I don't forget it. So I have to, um, I have to pay for, or I have to go pick up hopefully home, hopefully Hobby Lobby has, uh, the P the part, the, there's a decorative piece that I need to go with it. And so I'm looking for that. So it's funny. There's two comments back to back. One is calm down and one is rent to her rent. <laughs> Tell you, I'm going to have a stroke. And if I have a stroke over this, you're sending Home Beat Depot the bill for my co-pays. Well, they're not going to pay it. So I'll just drag her in and leave her on the Well, you just take them to court I'll leave then. you at the customer service desk. Oh, my no, goodness. I just... This is a continuation of Tara's revolution on wednesday listen the people at the people at our home depot are super super nice and they've been very very helpful so you know the people at ours have always been very helpful and everything but i'm telling you no it's not a bad batch teresa because i went and looked at the reviews and everybody's saying the same thing i don't know how this has five stars and i go and look and they are combining home depot's lying they're combining yeah Kimberly says, just hit the table. You'll feel better. Get it together, Home Depot. <laughs> but here's what they're doing. They're combining reviews for different products on mm. the same product. That is wrong. So when I went through and actually looked at all the negative reviews, my product that I got, everybody was like, this is water. It's awful. Mm. I was so mad. I was so mad. Jenny Lee said, you should have... Return the paint after the first coat, but you didn't notice it till after the second coat. No. So what happened was we did it. So I got one gallon and I put it on and I thought, holy cow, I did one coat and the entire gallon is gone. And all I got done was the kitchen and it's only two walls in my kitchen or in the ceiling, the ceiling and two walls was all I painted in my kitchen. And the whole gallon was gone. I told mom, I said, wow. I said, that went really fast. She's like, yeah. So I like the color. So I went back and got five gallons to my, that's my stupidity. And then what happened was 
we didn't realize it because the contractor was spraying a piece for Mike's brilliant idea. And me and another, the contractor has four people working here. And so me and one of that, their people, we were painting it. And she was like, wow, this is like water. And then the contractor comes in and he's like, man, this paint is like water. I was like, I've never seen. And mom and I were cutting in for uh, the living room. And mom and I were like, this is like water. So then I go and look at the reviews and everybody was saying the same thing. So that was my stupidity for not going and looking at the reviews after I should have known the first, the first gallon just went like crazy. And that's on top of primer. These days, it's really hard to, to know what What's reviews aren't reliable not. anymore. Yeah, yeah, reviews aren't really reliable anymore. So, so yes, uh, Kimberly, I wrote a review today. And I told them I'm a YouTuber and I'm letting all my people know. <laughs> and I'm going to do a review video on it. As a matter of fact, I'm going to paint the living room and show you how we have to put you, so many coats on. Did you give on. away my idea? Uh -uh. Alicia was wondering if you gave away Mike's. Uh -uh. Oh, she didn't give it away yet. I haven't given away your brilliant idea. I didn't hear what you were saying, but the other day, <laughs> Tara said something that got people's attention. <laughs> and and uh, so that's a question. Actually, yeah, it was one of the other videos this week. Tara made a slip about something else, and everybody was asking about it. <laughs> so Ida says, I tell you, I got my first cart to try Benjamin Moore. I painted the back half of the house with that one quart. Seriously? We don't have, I wonder if Casper, does Casper have a Benjamin Moore? Benjamin Moore. I don't know how you spell it, Casper. What, Wyoming. What, what is that? It's supposed to be Benjamin, but. <laughs> Good thing we don't have any kids named Benjamin. <laughs> oh, Ace. Huh, I wonder if our Ace carries Benjamin Moore paint. Because mom tried Ace's other paint and it was really bad too. So Little House Off Grid says, then we can write off on the taxes by doing a review. I wasn't <laughs> thinking. You're right. I'm going to pull that receipt and we need to reimburse ourselves. Sure. You're right. Thank you. Tam says, you lost our gains. Sorry that happened. Painting red. So you lost our gain because you're telling them in advance not to try it. I'm telling you, I feel like I'm going to have a stroke right now because I'm so ticked off. I'm just like. So it's mad. Okay, honey, I'll go draw you a nice hot bath. I'm so mad. You can sit in there and now you're not the one this. painting four coats of paint on the, a bath. Is not going to take care of this. Well, it will help. So well, I you. told you we could go <laughs> buy a lot more expensive. I paint know you did, bath. and I just I'm like, let's just use up what we have. You did tell me that, so I know. And actually, it probably would have been cheaper though than paying the contractor. Well, that's what to I was. Do that's it. what I was saying is I think that I really it would be better up. to pay more for paint. And only have to paint one or two coats on, <laughs> then to pay people a lot of money to be painting. Because Tara painted some, but they're painting some too, because they can't move the project along until it's painted. So, Deborah, when will we hear what Mike's brilliant idea is? We're being very patient. <laughs> uh, I will say probably around March 15th or 20th. That's probably when this thing will be done. So, yep. When, I'm not saying say? anything until it's done. When did you say? March 15th or 20th. Ooh, I can't wait to find out. <laughs> Mike approved so far. Uh, which bear one did you use? Uh, it was, let's see, I had it on here just a second. Let me oh, see if I can find it. Oh, it was Rob it. that said you can write it up on taxes. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Hey, Rob. Rob. Um, well, I said Little House Off Grid. I figured he'd want a I, shout out for I his channel. I didn't hear that. Since we love him so much. Yes. Um, let's see. Home Depot. Where did, oh, see my collars about me closing all my tabs. I don't close my tabs for a reason because I, I always them. need them. And then when I close them, I can't find what I need. Yeah. But when you have so many tabs, you have to do a search to find out which tab it was on. <laughs> where is that tab now? I know it's here somewhere in this pile of oh, tabs. Oh, wait, that's not my, that's my review. That's the review page tab. <laughs> oh my goodness i was just so mad i'm sorry i just i know i'm going on and on but guys i just do not want you to to make the same mistake that i made with that well shoot now i can't find it it was 
Um, oh man, also, there was a guy at the post office the other day who bought something through a Facebook ad and they he was they were wanting him to send it back and it was gonna cost more than the item to send it back. So if Facebook advertises something to you and you think you want to buy it, I would do not I would go to another browser and carefully research the company that's sending it to you and see if they have any complaints because there are a lot of scammy people. We're doing a video. We got Facebook scammed ads now. Yeah. Yeah. Do not buy anything from a Facebook ad. Well nothing. I, would, I mean I would say you can research the company and see if I anyone's wouldn't. making any complaints about it. Well, yeah, Taurus has done this. I wouldn't, because we found out the company that we bought something from, they were like they under by... 30 or 40 different names. And we got scammed, and our credit card company was not going to give us our money back. We have spent almost six months, let's see, four months. We have spent, spent, spent four months arguing back and forth with the credit card company trying to get our money back. And this, they're scamming the credit card companies. They're not even telling the truth to the credit card companies and the credit card companies are believing them. Okay. Sorry. Bear that, that premium company in plus. the past has told the, the credit card company has said, Hey, you know, you've been a member for 30 years. We're really, thank you. And I was, I was going to call and say, look, we're done. Cancel our card today. <laughs> so, but um, they ended up, going with it okay what happened is they didn't give us the opportunity to submit the same evidence they gave the other people and the they lied with their evidence yeah the other people <sighs> the the scam company lied with their evidence <laughs> fair premium plus interior paint is the one that i got just stay away from it oh i wouldn't even use any of their paints that that's just maddening tanya's life or maybe tanya's life do y'all have a goal date year to pay off the mortgage we're on track to 3.5 years from now god willing that's a great april. three and a half years is awesome Tara's saying april i would love it to be april it won't be I'm april but june, hoping probably. for june we i hope. think i'm confident it could be before the end of the year so buy our dining at a dining but, good books 35 percent off right now for our valentine sale <laughs> but uh yeah <laughs> June was my original prediction, and then we ended up having to buy more gluten-free books and more yeah. planners, and then I said, ooh, I don't, it looks like it's going to be later now, but yeah. um, we may still be sort of on track for June, I hope. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, we had expenses in the six figures come up this month that we've had to take care of. Six it. figures? I think so, yeah. Hmm. 20 and 20 Free and books? 12... 50 and then mr irs agent yeah oh yeah well six figures all i'm really close to six figures 20 20 there's 40 and then 50 and then another almost 20 seven well okay 70 or 80 <laughs> yeah we had a huge chunk of change have to come do all at once this month that we it's not that we weren't expecting it. It's just part of being in business for yourself. And so when we order cookbooks, it's, you know, we order. You have to pay for tens of thousands of dollars yeah. for an order of cookbooks. Yeah. Yeah. And so we always save aside that money to be able to do that. But, but we it's can't kind put of that on the house. To watch it go yeah. away. So yeah. all that income doesn't go to the house. It has to go right back into inventory. So, uh, yeah. Okay. So high five figures, I guess I should Ooh. say. Yeah. So when is that video coming out about that scam thing? Haven't I haven't it. filmed it yet because I have so many other videos that like the appliances and all that, that we're trying to get out. But yeah, I was thinking yeah. about us filming it next week, maybe. Yeah. Uh, Kimberly, uh, that, that was the one Kimberly asked if that was the one with the top, right? Yes. Yeah. Oh man. Well, we actually got the money back, Kimberly, <laughs> because I finally, well, I ended up having to put together something that looked like a legal summary of what he was, spent like, what, 10 hours dealing with it. I made like a, a big document that had photos and arrows and 250 bucks, things like that. But I was just thinking, I'm sorry, I, I'm just not going to let the money go away because a scammer <laughs> is false advertising on Facebook ads. Um, and we've seen their ads since then for other yeah. under other names. 
Yeah, Stephanie says the IRS has told several states to hold off on paying taxes. What does that mean? Uh, I th I don't know for sure what that means, but I do know there was a number there were a number of years back where uh, when we were in Kansas where the state was oh, holding yeah. people's tax returns. So yeah. we never pay we don't pay a lot extra to get an, a return an income tax refund at the end. We pay as we go because sometimes they don't refund it to you at, when you actually need it. <laughs> And yeah. it's kind of silly to send it to the government and have them hold it if you can be using it for something that's going to save you money or make you money or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing a review on the bare paint, guys. I'm going to show you every single coat. It's it's disgusting. It makes me so mad. So Kimberly says, I'll always look up the product on Amazon. If I see it on Instagram or Facebook, you might pay more on Amazon, but you're able to return it. Most of those Facebook and Instagram ads, you can't return the product and you're paying shipping and it's coming from Asia. So I'd rather just do Amazon. Yes, but even on Amazon, even though you can return it, you have you want to make sure it's free returns and you want to see like what condition is it. Some of them say well, you can't you can return it if it's unopened package or something. Uh, so I'd be careful on that. But one thing we've learned on the reviews for a lot of things is actually read the words that people type. Yeah. Don't look at the fact that it's 4.8 mm -hmm. stars because, because it's totally a scam in a lot of ways. A lot of times those stars are engineered. Well, where... and like I found out they were combined, they're combining products on the Home Depot one. So even though it's got like 50,000 five star reviews or something like that. It's not for all the same product. Yeah. I've, I've looked at things like, uh, you know, computer cables and it'll say, Oh yeah, this was, this was the best, uh, quilt something I ever bought. <laughs> and I was thinking, well, and that's five stars. And I was thinking, well, I don't believe that review related to computer cables then. And so there are, so you kind of have to read the reviews and I tend to look at three or four star reviews Three stars is good because, and four stars is good because you could tell that they wanted to give a positive review, but something bothered them about it. And the three star reviews are people that they're like, well, I want to be reasonable, but I just really hated the product. So I like to look at those kind of reviews and see the words that they write. Like, I really like this about it and I had high hopes for it, but the fact that this was a problem, that way I get a real, I feel like it's a real sense of what the product actually is. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, Illuminate, I missed it, but have you shared any more about the Duggar cult video? No, I mean, is there some, if there's something you want to know, go ahead and ask me. I had to close the comments because they just got out of hand and I just was like, you know what? I've said what I've said. And if you don't want to believe me, that's fine. But um, so if you have a question, go ahead and post it and I'll answer it now. But that's why I closed the comments because I was like, you know what? I'm just not going to keep repeating myself over and over again. Um Little house off grid, you might consider a carnivore diet. It's become a big thing. Everyone wants us to write one, but we are not interested. Actually, yeah, I kind of, I did that. I did that diet for like a week or 10 days before Christmas and I felt really good. And I should just go back on it again. But I mean, what's there to write? You fry up some chicken, you fry up a hamburger, you eat some bacon. There's only so many things. I mean, you can wrap your chicken in your hamburger and bacon, but you know, I mean, if you're going real carnivore, then it's just meat. But since I'm dairy free and can't eat dairy, I mean, I guess I could write the cookbook, I suppose. But anyway, yeah. Um, you should write it though, Rob. I'm telling you, write an ebook and you will bring in some dollars. That's what you're wanting to do. You should write it. It's not that hard. Holler and we can tell you if you want, email me and we can tell you how to do it. Um, Ida, you'd be surprised how much you crave a piece of lettuce when you go carnivore. Really? <laughs> I don't know. I did fine for the week I was on there, actually. Guys, Dining on a Dime cookbook, put your questions in and we will answer them. 35% off right now, volume one, volume two, and our gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook, livingonadime.com, 35% off now. Yes, I actually entertained the idea of doing some cooking videos with the new kitchen. We were looking up keywords, possibly. I don't know. I don't know. I'm terrified to try because they were such a bomb before. But I don't know. With the new kitchen, maybe, well, maybe also, it might be worth it. Well, also, I think it. we've learned a little better how to get how to get people interested in watching. So, because there were there were so what happens? We used to do the cooking videos, and there was a certain group of people that watched them all the time. But we noticed that well, not a lot of new people were coming, and so. 
some people said, how come you haven't done cooking videos in a long time? And it's because other videos have brought more newer people in as well. Yeah. So, so they were only uh, reaching out to one group, but now Tara was thinking yeah. maybe you might try it. Uh, maybe your mom wouldn't be have gotten so sick if she ate healthier and took a few supplements. Oh, give me a break. She goes to the doctor and the doctors say she has the blood work of a 40 year old. It has absolutely nothing to do with what she eats. That's just ridiculous. She doesn't have diabetes. She doesn't, I mean, I know we have chronic fatigue syndrome, but she has high blood pressure, but it's genetic in our family. So that's normal. And, um, so it has nothing, nothing to do with that. Um, that's just a, that's just Satan using food as an idol for people. Once again, my grandma is 94 years old and has eaten all the same stuff for all 94 years. And she's perfectly healthy for a 94 year old. So as a matter of fact, she went into the hospital because she had, we thought she was having a stroke and they did all these tests and they're like, we have no idea what happened, but you're in perfectly healthy shape. So anyway. Wanda says, um, I still think you should write a mini book on how you're eating during a kitchen remodel. I guess the thing is, is it's nothing fancy. I mean, we're just having scrambled eggs and toast. We're having tacos. We're having. She's using the instant roast. pot, which we don't normally use. A lot of, yeah. A lot. And. That's air fryer a lot. Air fryer and. Um, all of those kinds of things. Everybody likes my cooking videos, huh? I don't know. Yeah. On the taxes, guys, try not to get a tax refund. That's just giving the government a free loan for your money without interest. You should never, ever get a tax refund. As a matter of fact, I would prefer to pay taxes than to get a refund and just save extra money on the side. Yeah, we usually work it out where we pay a very small amount at the end because we pay as yeah. we go. Now, we did get a refund when we moved from Colorado to Wyoming because it's so well, much cheaper. Well, because we had paid Colorado for a lot more than we lived there. Yeah, so we did get a refund then, but that wasn't our fault because we, we were forced by the government to pay more than we actually should have so well the yeah. calculation was such that we paid sort of in advance for parts of the time that we weren't there yeah yeah kimberly i used to love the cooking videos because of the flubs it made it so real and relatable i will never forget tara burning her heat protectants in the oven that were on rice <laughs> oh I, man that was a mess wasn't it somebody mentioned it a couple was that the silpat yeah well the the silicone to keep me from burning oh, myself, oh, to keep things. me from burning myself <laughs> on the oven, and I put it on the self-cleaning thing, and they basically incinerated and exploded in the oven with that white stuff all over. Actually, it's funny because someone the other day mentioned I, I'm somebody the other day mentioned when you were making soap, and she was making soap on a live stream, <sighs> live streaming off of her phone, and she didn't set up the tripod quite right, and it fell. And the phone went the boiling, into the boiling soap. <laughs> she freaked out and was like, And he said, ah! my phone. And, and I grabbed the tripod, not the phone itself, because I didn't want to put my hand in there, but uh, pulled it out and and it actually kept streaming. Yeah. <laughs> so it was, it was hilarious. And he saved my phone. My phone still worked. I had to clean all the not. soap out of the all the little cracks in the phone, but it still worked after oh, that. Oh, well, now that's true love. When you never mind. I, I had to use. Way. I did have to use um, probably twenty toothpicks to pick through all those little places in the phone. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes. She has not been cooking in the studio so far. So, uh, but it's the new kitchen that I think yeah. she's more inclined to want to do that in. I honestly just have not had time. Uh, we hired editors three months ago. And honestly, I thought it would take a lot off my plate and it hasn't. It's actually created more work for me. So it's been about three months now. And I think we're finally getting the flow with the editors and getting things down a little bit better. So I'm hoping that they will start taking a little bit more off my plate, although it hasn't happened yet, but it's not necessarily their fault. It's just the way it goes, apparently, from what I hear. Jan remembers that video. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, Cynthia said, I started making Mike's biscuits from seeing the video. Now I make a triple batch. When I make them, I have a Southern husband. Yes. Dining on a Dime Cookbook volume is Mike's baking powder biscuits, and they are delicious. Yes. I grew up in the South, and I have right a great now. appreciation. They're really good biscuits. Good biscuits. They are really good yes. biscuits. Yes. So I yeah. worked a lot to perfect Oh, them. and Deborah says they love the apple cake recipe. Your daughter baked it for Senior Saints Day, or for Senior Saints at our church, and they loved it. Yay. Yay. Johnny, the doctor's telling me I have low potassium, critically low B12, and have to cut out sugar and carbs. I'm stressing because I only get $80 food stamps a month, so do you have any advice? Well, yeah. I have pretty much all those things myself, so I really wouldn't panic. First of all, liver, I mean, if you can't take the supplements, I would take the potassium and B12 supplements. I'm on both of those myself, but I would take the supplements if you can, but if not, just get your meats, <coughs> just get whatever meat is on sale for the grocery store. You're just going to have to watch your sale ads and see what's on sale. That's what I buy. And, um... Sugar, I'm. it's awful going off sugar. I know they say your cravings go away. I, I have never had that happen. I, to this day, I'm sitting here looking at the can of blueberry pie filling thinking, hmm, <laughs> do I really want to be off of sugar? <laughs> I have a whole shelf of food for our cooking videos that's not getting used over here. <gasps> wow. And so you won't, your sugar cravings won't go away that I, that I know of. You just have to suck it up and decide it's not worth you know, not feeling good. So it's funny to see the things that people are remembering rest while well, sharing about the recipes they love. Mama B says the honey chicken is our favorite. That's actually our awesome. number one recipe on our website. Yeah, it, it is. And then uh, Mary says, my husband loves the chicken fried steak from your cookbook. I absolutely love it. It's my favorite. I'm a major chicken fried steak guy. So volume one, 35% off the chicken fried steak. He asked for that every Excuse me, every birthday. I think uh, Father's I think it Day. ended up in there because she knew I liked it that much. <laughs> beef taco bake, I think, is in this one too. That's a really good one. The beef taco bake is really good too. And at the time, we were we couldn't really afford to go eat it in a restaurant either, so mm -hmm. that was that was much easier way to handle not having that much money. Yeah, while we were paying off our debt and stuff. Alicia says I went off sugar for six months, felt great, but no cravings, never completely went away. Yeah. Um. They don't. I I mean, maybe there's some secret that I'm missing. I don't know what it is. I add fat. I do notice that it's a lot easier when I make sure I eat enough fat. So get bacon, use butter on everything. And that really helps a lot to eat butter on everything. Ooh, D cassette. Oh, oh, we also love Shayla's easy ham and noodles yeah. recipe. That's our sister-in-law. Yeah. And Cynthia says beef taco bake. Yes. yes. <laughs> and says every single, she has every single bit and they have helped tremendously. Oh, that's awesome. Oh, and Cynthia likes the cheeseburger rolls. <laughs> <laughs> that is awesome. Thanks for letting us know. Yeah. I had thought about. Oh, the apple pie. Yeah. That's her mom's. Is it your mom's recipe or yeah. just your mom's crust? My mom's recipe. It's amazing. Yeah. It's really amazing. I had thought about having our viewers do cooking videos and send them in to us and putting them on a channel That'd or be putting cool. on super easy recipes. I thought about having our viewers do that. I don't know how, how I would do that though, because I don't know if I'd give them like a $25 gift card to the store or something. I don't know how, I think it would be great to see other people making the foods from our cookbooks and showing how they're doing that um so deb yeah so i don't know how how would we do that guys throw me out some ideas because i'd really love to do where viewers just send in their videos deborah says eating beef butter bacon and eggs her cravings are gone i think that's all she's eating probably well i mean actually i will <laughs> say when i went totally only beef i did get a very specific kind of beef that doesn't make me sick that's like six dollars a pound and when I ate that, if I ate three of those patties a day with butter, I actually, I, it, my cravings weren't as bad. Now they didn't go away. I'm not going to tell you they went away because they didn't go away, but maybe I just didn't give it long enough because it only, I was only on it for like a week or 10 days or something right before Christmas. And then Christmas hit. 
<sighs> Christmas is my downfall. But yeah. Uh, Mama V said I'd make a video. <laughs> I mean, I would love to do that and give people like a twenty-five dollar gift gift certificate or something to this to the shop, but I don't know how or do a compilation of viewers like bake making the. I don't know. I, that's something that I would really think people would like to do. Yeah, because Cat Lovers made videos on her channel using our recipes. Go check them out, guys. Um, she, uh, here, cat lover, I'm making you a moderator. Throw a link in there for one of your dining videos. Um, let's see. There you are. You're, you're, you've changed your name again. <laughs> you changed your name again. Yeah, um, just probably just trying to get, get it perfect. I know. I just didn't realize that. Yeah. So you gotta keep the cat lover theme though. Yeah. Uh, hey, I don't know if you saw, but Ann also said, I've been watching your live cooking videos all week, and I think it's cool how all of your tips from years ago are still relevant for saving money today, even with rising prices. People think you got to cut coupons to save on your grocery bill. It has nothing to do with coupons. It Ironically, really doesn't even have a whole lot to do with sales, to be honest. Well, I'd say a lot of those ideas were things that our Depression era grandparents used, yeah. right? Well, yeah, because that's what it was. Yeah. Thrive on Journey. I'm doing 11 day jump start, and the average person loses 7 to 15 pounds. It's a combo of paleo, intermittent fasting, exercise every day, water, half the body weight, ounces supplements. Oh. Uh, Cynthia, not Cynthia. I guess that's what I need, but. Julie asked if you have ideas for cheap food to feed our church youth group, usually around 20 kids. And since you have experience in that area. <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> Your chili, your spaghetti with garlic bread, which is typical. But, I mean, you could make other things like green chili. Dining on a dining volume one. Make green chili. You could do, uh, you could get chicken leg quarters and make the honey baked chicken, which is a lot more. It's not, you know, that would be a lot to do something like that for 20 kids. But you could do baked potatoes. You could do potato soup. You could do stew. You could do chicken soup. You could make a couple of things like banana bread, zucchini bread. You could do um, pasta salad, Shayla's ham and noodles. Um, what else? Chicken and pasta would be good. Chicken wings might be good. Chicken and dumplings. So maybe that's a few ideas. Deborah says teens like sloppy joe. Sloppy joes are really good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wanda yeah. said out of Goshen is doing keto yeah. and they've lost weight. I've noticed. Lost, yeah, I noticed. I saw Eric and I was like, oh. Was he sick? No. He just lost weight. Yeah. <laughs> It is funny that we when personally somebody... know they're really good friends of ours. We haven't talked to them for a while. I just know. I was thinking we need to... life happening, but we need to call them and see how they're doing actually. Yeah. Yeah. Heather, I'm not sure. I didn't, that was the only comment I saw and I see your follow-up one. So I don't know what's up, what's up with that. <laughs> oh, Kimmy says, yeah, you're still on. Who? Kimmy. Oh, Kimmy. <laughs> I just talked to you today. Kimmy. <laughs> Kimmy, it's like two hours. And what did we so talk she's... about? YouTube. <laughs> we talked about YouTube again. Wow. Someday I'm going to call Kimmy. Do I need to send you with the manager if you go with Kimmy <laughs> on a vacation somewhere so that person can sit with you both all the time and say, ah, ah, uh, no, no, no. Ah. So someday, nope, that's uh, here's work. what I'm going to do. <laughs> Out of the blue, I'm going to call Kimmy and say, hi, Kimmy, how are you doing? She's going to say, fine. What's happening? Oh, not much. Okay, well, it was nice talking to you. Because <laughs> both of our lives just revolve around YouTube. It's all we revolve around. I'm only kidding. I was joking with her today about that when we were talking about YouTube. Oh, my goodness. Sorry. Okay. I can't okay. have a stroke today. <clears throat> Sorry, I have to what? go get oh. books tomorrow, so I can't have a straight finish. Cheryl wants to know what kind of beef did not make you sick. You said that when you had the beef, it didn't make you sick. <sighs> so I don't know if I want to say. <laughs> okay. So, hold on. Let me look up how to pronounce it. It wasn't cheap. Okay, That's I'm telling you it's not cheap right now. 
but you guys have to understand, I have some sort of food sensitivity thing where like 40 foods when I did my test made me really sick. Uh, do they not have it anymore? Uh, and so I have all, of, oh, here it is. So I have all these food sensitivities that like all these foods make me sick. But when I got the Wagyu beef, it's 648 a pound. Whew. Wagyu beef. But I ate one of those a day. So it was $6 a day. So I ate <clears throat> one of those a day with butter, ghee, with ghee, clarified butter. And I did feel better. That's all you were eating, That's right? That's all I ate. Yeah. Every now and because she has chronic fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, every now and then, if she's feeling especially bad about something, she will want to try something to see if, if it makes her feel better. So I figure it's a lot cheaper than doctors and drugs. So. Yeah. So I need to just go back on it again. The problem is our taco date night blows it for me. But I was able to resist, oh, oh. though, last taco date night when I was on that diet. I was able to resist the chips and salsa that day. <laughs> yeah. So uh, all of our books have recipes. Yes, Jerry, they're all recipes. Like there's 500 recipes. There's 1,200 recipes and tips, but there's 500 recipes alone in volume one. <gasps> um, Ooh, Kimmy's giving samples of things uh, that sh you can talk about this month's business. Um. Okay, hold on. I'm getting down there. Hold on. Oh, okay. Oh, thank you for a script. See, Kimmy's practicing her script writing, which we were talking about today. <laughs> I'm fine, Tara. How are the kids? Mom, how's the kitchen remodel? What's for dinner? Oh, that sounds awesome. Can I find that recipe in your awesome cookbook? Yes, Kimmy. Just go watch the video. <laughs> I was thinking, wait, it gets into dangerous like territory it. when you say your awesome cookbook because that's invites discussion of business this is true this is true <laughs> kimmy loves my cookbook she did some recipes and everybody loved them by the way thank you again for that i appreciate it yeah guys go go kimmy you're a moderator go put in yes please go put in your um video for when you did the apple pie for thanksgiving and show everybody what it's like she did it for me and she didn't just do it because she's my friend <laughs> she actually did it and was really testing it so Unlike the Home Depot paint, I know that it actually works. <laughs> um, so you asked on the Duggar cult. Yes, you can re-ask me a question if you want. I did not expound on that. So um, Cat Larissa, or no, Cat Lady says, um, I don't have food sensitivities. I have autoimmune issues. Yeah, so that's. That's my issue. It's just auto autoimmune issues. So I have leaky gut. And so, well, I don't really have a leak, that much leaky gut anymore, but since so going gluten free, but um, yeah. So uh, now Cat Lover can't find the cooking videos. It's okay, Cat Lover, if you can't find it. Um, As Rob wants to know, are the cookbooks hardcover? Yes. Yes, and, they are. But they lay flat. So everybody was like, oh, I want the spiral. We could not do the spiral. This one is almost 600 pages. It's not physically possible to do the spiral, but we had a special binding. This is a brand new book, brand new book. I haven't even opened this book. And you can see that it lays flat even up to the front pages. It lays flat. So it is hardcover, but it does lay flat. So, Yeah, the last spiral um, bound ones we had, we ordered, we ordered an order of them. And when they got here from the printer, the spirals were, they changed the spirals and they weren't working mm -hmm. right at all. And we realized, and they said, the problem is you just have too many pages in the book for a spiral. Yeah. So we had to can that idea because it just didn't work. Uh, Robin is buying spices in bulk online. Worth it for us to, for people who don't have access to Winco or stores. Listen, do you have a Walmart? Just get the Walmart little $1 ones. I have priced it out a thousand times and it has always, che always been cheaper with Walmart. So, um, yeah, so I'm going to do that. And 
So just like I'm pricing out on Tuesday's video that's coming up, our live that we're doing on Tuesday, I'm doing the great toilet paper test of 2023 to see which toilet paper is cheaper. And what's hilarious is my printer lives in Fort Collins, Colorado, and they have a Costco um, membership. And I was like, hey, when I come to pick up the planners, by the way, guys, we have our planners in stock and I'm getting the rest tomorrow or the next first of the order tomorrow. We have our daily undated planner. So if you need a planner, but I said, could you bring me a roll of Costco toilet paper? When you come? And she said, well, I don't have any, but I have Sam's. She wants to embarrass Mike on and, the show again. And I said, <laughs> well, I said, okay, yeah, that'll work. And I said, yeah, don't go and get a special one. Cause I thought, well, I think maybe I'll just go to Costco and offer somebody $10 to buy a roll of toilet paper from them. And <laughs> see if they'll just give me a roll of toilet paper for ten dollars, and uh, so I don't have to renew my membership just to go buy toilet paper because we don't have a Costco in our town. And so um, she said, "Oh, Tara," she said, "I'll go buy Costco for you. I'll I'll take one for the team." <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, goalie. <laughs> she was so funny. So anyway, ah, uh, Wanda thank you. asked if dairy free means no eggs. No. 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 Dairy free eggs aren't well, technically dairy, like they're a, in the dairy aisle, but they're not technically I think that's dairy. That's why she was confused. Dairy yeah. means cow, so yeah, no. Thank you, Kimmy, for putting in that apple pie recipe, guys. Go check it out. She um, she tested it, and um, yeah, M. Dilworth, I think you should do a viewer's recipe cookbook. Yes, I have actually thought about that. I have actually thought about doing a viewer's recipes. Because our viewers have some really good recipes they shared with us. Um, yes, everybody says they'd love the lay flat cookbooks. Yep. Oh, thank you. Cat Lover put one of her videos in there of testing our recipes too. Um, we just buy great value one ply. It's just like Scott. Ooh, and guess what? You're wasting money. I proved that in the great toilet paper test in 2018. And I will prove it again. I know I'll prove it again in the great toilet paper test of 2023 coming Tuesday. It was 2018? Mm -hmm. Wait, it's coming Tuesday? Yep. So the question is, do we use Nutella or do we use peanut butter and cocoa powder? Or do we just get in the toilet and... <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Sorry for all of you eating dinner watching this. I apologize. Um... Robin, no, don't do your cooking toilet paper. It's not that amazing. Actually, it is. It came out number one in our toilet paper test of 2018. So, it so actually, Rachel, unless they've changed it, they may have changed it in five years. So they may have changed it. So Rachel, the beef that Tara bought is not $150, $200 a pound. So uh, um, it might not be the same one you looked up. It, no, it's the same one. It's just their steaks are $150 a pound. Oh, their steaks are, pound, wow. But not just the hamburger. Wow. Yeah. Wow. But it's the only one that doesn't make me sick when I eat it. I actually <clears throat> eat it and don't think I need an Alka-Seltzer. And the way I know when I eat something that makes me sick is if I think I need an Alka-Seltzer. Because Alka-Seltzer combats my food sensitivities. So when I eat something that makes me really sick, then, then I know. So. And if you're just joining us, Tara pays $6 for that. I pay $6. I don't pay $150. <laughs> And that's all I eat. I eat one package of that a day and that's it. So it's not like I'm, you know, whatever. Yeah. But, and it's still expensive. I mean, it's not the, what, $4, I, $3 I spend a day on food, but you know, yeah. Yeah. Um, what kind of alka seltzer do I get? Um, just the regular, not the cold, just the regular alka seltzer. You can get the off brand. The Kroger brand was the cheapest one that we had in Colorado. Yep, we don't have a Kroger here, yeah. so we buy it at Walmart here. But yeah, the Kroger store, we'd get yeah. it for super cheap, the yeah. store brand. Rachel says, I think the ordinary beef make you sick because it ain't grass fed. Nope. The doctor said, do not eat grass fed. Do not waste your money on grass fed. It is a huge scam. You need the fat from the grain fed beef to help you feel full. So, and I don't like the taste of grass fed. It's nasty. It's like eating grass. I don't like it, but I mean, that's fine if you want to, but 
Actually, Amelia says, for those with gut issues, you might watch Furman at Homestead. Actually, don't. I have gut issues, and I went on a GAPS diet with all these fermented foods, and I was in bed physically sick from it. Now, it helps some people, and that's fine. Go ahead and try it. But be warned, if you make it worse, if you get a lot worse, you're not detoxing or whatever. You're having a reaction to the bacteria in that stuff that's making you sick. So all of this extra probiotic food, bacteria stuff, it's not all it's cracked up to be. So, yeah. <laughs> oh, Rock Farm says once you bidet, you don't go back. That's so true. Uh, Joe says, I subscribed to your channel the first time I watched you. You were talking on the video and there was a fire behind you. Do you remember that? How can we forget that? <laughs> that must have been the Thanksgiving on fire oh my goodness i would say that's my classic yes are you gonna when i die are you gonna put that on my tombstone just running all the time for all the people who are gonna be streaming by waiting in line 30 hours to walk by my grave <laughs> uh, i'm kidding you as know. you pay let freedom ring oh wait god save the queen <laughs> <laughs> Well, I hate to say it, but you don't look like you're feeling very oh, good. Oh, I'm going down here real quick, and I got to get up at should five o'clock in the morning. I've been on the pink ribbon diet for my food allergies and shocked. Okay, well, that's a new one. I wonder what a pink ribbon diet is. Now I'll have to look at that one and see. I don't know. Green matcha tea with manuka honey for an upset stomach? I've never heard of either of those things. Well, that's a new one on me. Huh. Yep. I don't know. Guys, 35% off our cookbooks on our Valentine. I help our pay off our house sale. I mean, Valentine's sale. I don't know what sale. <laughs> volume one, volume two, and then your gluten-free, dairy-free cookbooks are 35% off. They will help you cut your grocery bill, guys. And... Um... <laughs> Did you see what Deborah said? <laughs> You go ahead and talk about the books first. It's okay. Go ahead. Yeah, Deborah said, has he used this as kneeling pad in front of your grave? I actually <clears throat> tested that the other day, and it works great. And uh, he wasn't kneeling to bow down to me. You know? <laughs> okay, I have to quickly answer. And Robin said, okay, what is a bidet? It's this little uh, appliance that you put on your toilet that uh, like sprays water, so you use water instead of so much toilet paper. So, on your bum. Yeah. To clean it's the poop off your bum. something that people have used in France for ages and ages. Yeah. <clears throat> and we all thought, oh, I would never do that. I would never do that. And Tara was like, I think we should get one. We're well, like, no, when that, that thing going around hit. Yeah, when because everybody went crazy you can get with the toilet, toilet paper. paper thing. But what's funny is now our teenagers, well, they hate going anywhere without it. <laughs> so... We were even going to go camping and they were like, well, do they have a bidet? I'm like, it's camping. <laughs> Oh my goodness. How do I cook the way goo or however you say it? I just have a George Foreman grill, cook it on my George Foreman grill or the air fryer, either one. And then I take the fat that cooks out, pour it back on top after, or after it's done cooking, I take the fat and pour it back on top with some additional ghee, clarified butter, because I'm dairy free. And then I eat all of the fat and the beef also. Uh, just before we go, Tana was wondering what kind what kind of um, probiotic do you take and does it help? I don't. Because oh, they were making me sick. Okay. The bacteria was making me physically ill. Okay. And I found out that was one of the things that I really had an issue with. And the doctors kept, the functional medicine doctors, functional medicine has its place. And I've spent thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars on, med on functional medicine. And it helped for some things. But some of the things they tell you to do doesn't always work. And you have to know when it's not working and stand up and say it's not working. Yep. Wanda says, when you talk about a bidet, I think crocodile dundee. <laughs> we should watch that again. That's funny. All right. 35% right. off Valentine's sale, livingonadime.com. Thank you guys for joining us. Yes, Jay Moore, I have tried lamb too, but actually it's been making me kind of sick too. So anyway, livingonadime.com. We will see you guys next time. Have a great night. Bye. It's good having you here. <laughs>